Spoilers! If you had the master in the office pool, congratulations, you are a winner. Yep, the master regenerated. Thank you, Stephen Moffat, for that stirring public service announcement about the dangers of talking on your mobile phone while walking. Kids, don't try this at home. Don't try it walking home. So, is Series 8 ending with a bang or a whimper? We, we don't actually know yet. Could go either way. I'll tell you next week. Episode 11 is the first of a two-part finale, Dark Water, written by Stephen Moffat, directed by Rachel Talale, who will also do Part 2. Talale has very cool stuff in her credits. Working for John Waters, producing several of the Nightmare on Elm Street series, directing the last of them, Freddy's Dead. She also directed the cult favorite Tank Girl and lots of TV. She's an American. This is the first half of a two-parter, which makes it a little hard to, re to review it, because by design, everything's left unsettled, all up in the air. Maybe the, the rule needs to be the more things that are left up in the air, the better the episode. In which case, this was a great episode, but to me, it felt a little tedious. I thought it was a slog to get through it, and I'm not sure why. It's always a cheap shot to throw a writer's dialogue back at him, but I am not above a cheap shot. It wasn't terrible. It was boring. It was ordinary, which is surprising considering everything that Moffat packed into it. Spoilers. Last warning. Spoilers. It was chock full, wasn't it? Killing off Danny in the cold open? Shocker. Clara going crazy, completely bonkers, completely mental. Shocker. Clara trying to extort the doctor. Shocker. Throwing the TARDIS keys into Mount Doom. Shocker. I have to say, I just don't get Clara. She's whatever the story needs week to week. The scene at the volcano was well-crafted and powerful, but let me scratch my head. Really? Really, Clara? And it ended with one of the doctor's best lines ever. Do you think I care for you so little that betraying me would make a difference? Spooky x-ray water, cool effect, though I have to say that was not entirely a new concept to me. When I was a kid, I had a novelty pen. You turn it over, she gets naked. Also, it reminds me completely of those novelty mugs where you fill it with hot coffee or tea. And the picture gets naked. Do you know PBS sells those in their store with famous nudes from great art? What else did we get? Well, we finally got to read the chapter that Danny wrote in the Annals of the Horrors of Wartime. Ay, 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 he killed the little boy. Whoo, no wonder he always seems to be in shock. I wonder if we're going to get more of that story. I haven't looked at the cast list for next week. Does the boy come back? A really neat design of a mausoleum that echoes, updates, darkens, and thanks to the magic of CGI, expands the look of Tomb of the Cybermen one of the best of the classic Who serials from the Patrick Troughton era. Missy kissing the doctor full on the lips and thrice on the nose. Play that back in your mind now that you know that Missy is the master, uh, the mistress. How long has the master been lusting for that kiss? Or work it the other way. Stephen Moffat, master of revisionism, has just rewritten the subtext of every past episode featuring the master. Watch any old episode or serial with the master from any era. Try to keep that kiss out of your head. And we had a proper cliffhanger. Clara locked in a room with a Cyberman. Danny contemplating whether to delete himself from the netherworld. Missy about to rob all the graves on planet Earth. And the Doctor terrified, paralyzed, nonplussed, and clueless. The episode gave us a very rich meal. Left us with a precarious cliffhanger. Why am I complaining? Tone, I think. The only character in the story that had any fun at all is Missy. Bravo, Michelle Gomez. Supervillains have all the fun. Somehow she manages to channel every master since Roger Delgado. Brilliant casting, brilliant performance, a worthy Moriarty to Capaldi's Sherlock. Everyone else was just miserable, except Seb. Gotta love Seb. Well written, well played. Hope he has a scene with the Doctor. Lots of fans are hoping for that. A reunion of Peter Capaldi and Chris Addison, who starred together in the thick of it. It's a given that everything has to go bad in a part one. We, we know that. But why does everybody have to be so miserable, tedious, confused, and talky? Do you know who's even more boring than Danny Pink? Dead Danny Pink. Am I the only one who gets annoyed with the doctor for being so thick? For failing to recognize the architectural motif of the Cybermen eyes all over the netherworld? He clearly had a shock of recognition when he felt Missy's two hearts, but Dr. Idiot didn't seem to make it past the shock. Remember what he asked of Clara? I need skeptical, clever, critical. I don't need mopey. Wish he'd taken his own advice on board. This is the difference between writing horror and writing mystery. In horror, you want your audience to be a step or two ahead of the characters, so the audience is screaming at the screen, No, 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 don't go in there! Don't, no, it's a trap! It's the Cybermen! In mysteries, you want your audience a step or two behind your detective. You want to leave clues, but you want the detective to solve them before the audience. I like it better when the doctor is the detective, not the teenager poking around the haunted house. I'm never happy when they write him as Dr. Idiot. I want from him what he wanted from Clara. Clever, skeptical, critical. I don't need Mopey. Guess he used up all his smarts battling Clara at Mount Doom. 
One, one other thing. I am just so happy that I am not a parent of a young child who has to explain about a recently cremated loved one. Did it hurt? Did it hurt when they burned Grandpa's body? Did he scream, don't cremate me? Moffat, you're a sadist, and I do hope they publish the emails that Moffat and the BBC get over this one. So, where do we go from here? I'm not speculating, but anyone who guessed that Missy is the master is invited to call this one. You know where to leave your comments. Until next time, I'm Mikola. DVD extras, question time. Why did Missy kill Dr. Chang? If she's harvesting bodies, why did she disintegrate him? Do they give everyone the same extensive post-mortem grief counseling they're giving Danny? Is, is that scalable? Maybe Seb is an app. Maybe Seb can be everywhere at once. Maybe that's what. <laughs> Maybe he's like angry birds. How did Missy manage to construct all of those dark water tombs inside of St. Paul's? How did she manage to fit them inside? And how does it benefit a Cyberman to have a human skeleton with no muscles? If you can help with any of that, the comments are open. And I'm going to give myself one last chance. It's Maeve, spelled Maeve. Don't you wish they gave Maeve jazz hands instead of this? That's all I got. Now, uh, over here, that's, that's a playlist of other reviews of this episode, including Darren Locke, Barry Aldridge, and Emergency Awesome. Anybody else I should add? And over here... That's a list of my previous reviews, including the two I did for episode 10. Bye now.